We are Luminous Figure Painters. Welcome! This is the fourth Tyranid Grim Dark Painting tutorial, in which I'll be painting up Old One-Eye, the unstoppable juggernaut from Hive Fleet Behemoth. Now let's light our lamps and grab our brushes. First, we'll prime our model in Vallejo Acrylics Black Primer at 20 PSI. Now, allow that to dry for 15 minutes, then get some white ink and spray at a roughly 45 degree angle, and then straight down on the zenith. Now we'll base the skin. Use Vallejo Game Air Color Gory Red. After that's down, I use a fluorescent red ink from Dalla Rowney. You might think this is weird, but we'll need all the brightness we can get out of this skin. The next step, not shown unfortunately, is an oil wash of burnt umber, a tiny bit of black, and cadmium red hue. Thin it with a white spirit. Add a drop of satin medium, I purchased oil expert enhancing medium from Vantage Modeling Solutions for a greasy rubbery alien look in the recesses. We can then clean that up with a q-tip and let it dry for about an hour. Then we'll just dab on a little thinned mixed flesh tint and cadmium red hue on the edges of the skin. Get yourself a nice makeup brush and feather it all to get a nicely blended, vibrant, alien peachy skin. You can stop here and it'll look great, but I went in about a week later after the oils had cured and glazed over those bits with bloody red from Viejo and that ink from before, thinned to a touch with Lam Lamian medium. Okay, now we'll start on the crispy, crunchy shell. As you can see, I added quite a bit of variety to the model with a mix of crackle and texture paints. Feel free to omit this step if you like, but for Old One Eye, I thought it would be really rad looking. First, we'll cover all that undercoat with a layer, or possibly two, of black Templar contrast paint from Citadel. Then it's just a bunch of dry brushing, honestly. The paints I used for this are Viejo Gr Game Colors Opaque Paints. Blue, Cold Gray, Charcoal, and Green. I used a fairly crappy brush and just started building up those layers with first a dark teal gray, which was charcoal, blue, and green then added more green and cold gray as I increased the lightness. Eventually it was just about mostly cold gray and a touch of blue and green. So in reality this is less of a blue shell than it is a faded black one. Pretty simple, just takes a while. After highlighting is done I like to go back in with a mix of water and blue and black washes from Citadel to bring back a little texture variance on the highlights. I like to load up my brush and dab off the excess on a paper towel, shown here, so that I can eventually stab some dots on without too much brush, brush strokes coming through. Okay, now we'll move on to the exposed bone and teeth, as well as the tongue. I based this out with Rackarth Flesh from Citadel, then highlighted with Pallid Witch Flesh. I thinned down a bit of Seraphim Sepia with Medium and pushed that into the recesses, then came back and re-added what highlights were needed with Pallid Witch Flesh and a white. For the tongue and bone closest to the flesh, I applied Caraberg Crimson Slightly Thinned. You can also add a little Druchy Violet if you want on the tongue. Finally, I added Nuln Oil Gloss to the bottom of the teeth and maybe even the back of the tongue. And when that was dry, I added some thinned gloss varnish to make it all seem gross and wet. So 
so I kept referencing the uh, heavy, heavy metal version of Old One Eye and decided the straight black weapon was not going to work for me as far as taste went. So I decided to try something new. So have you ever had to pry a ball or a stick out of your dog's mouth and its mouth has this weird pink mottled with black look? That's kind of what I ended up getting out of this technique and I kind of like it. To do it, I started with a base coat of scale color matte black, then grabbed some sponge for chipping and applied Viejo Heavy Warm Gray. I dry brushed this with Eldar, Eldar Flesh Dry Paint from Citadel. To get the blue green shadow, I applied quite a bit of Coelia Green Shade, then quickly cleaned my brush and feathered it out after dampening it. You can do this a couple times to get a more saturated color at the base of the weapons. Pretty neat? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Just a couple more steps left, then we can get to the grime stage, which I helpfully left out because I'm a genius. At this point, we'll get those joints and little vents or ribbed things. Uh, I don't know what they are. Anyway, with a little bit of Kislev Flesh or Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel, we'll put that on just as a base coat. I ended up using a yellow transparent paint over this because of a reference photo, but you can add whatever you want to make uh, to make it look icky. Could be a blue wash, a fluorescent paint, maybe a blue-green wash, something like that. Blood for the blood god, whatever. Just make it gross. Gross is good, especially when we're doing the grimdark style. And finally, we'll base the non-dead eye in white as a base coat for the glow. Use any white you like, doesn't matter which. Just as long as it's bright and opaque. Okay, again, as I said, I messed up and deleted the grime stage. I apologize and shall flagellate myself later. But we've gone through this a bunch of times. I sprayed blue for Panzer Gray all over the model at about 10 PSI, waited about 10 minutes for it to dry, then dabbed off the excess with first a wool dauber for large areas, then a Q-tip to get a little finer, and then finally a brush, all dampened with white spirits. You can also get this on the base if you like, but if you want to have a different scheme than I do, then no big deal. You can use any, any different color that'll go well with red. Make sure that you're leaving a bit of the grime so there is some color modulation afterwards. After that's done, you can get a little streaking grime for winter vehicles by ammo into some select parts of the model. I like this color on red quite a bit. Again, just make sure a little is left over so you can see the grime. Now we'll get to the spittle and gooey blood effects going. Om nom 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 nom. Using a toothpick, I pick up a little UHU or E6000 and stretch the glue from one anchor point to another. You really have to play with this to get a good feel for it, so practice on something that doesn't matter to you, like a paper clip. You want thin and also thick strands, so try to make some variation. After that's dried out, about 5 to 10 minutes, I apply a, texture, a mixture of brown, red, and black ink from Viejo to the strands, which got me a sort of old and gross blood look. Save this mix for later when you're splattering. After that, I add blood for the blood god in the same way. Try to be careful with this, as the strands may snap if you're too rough with a brush. Now I'll show you how to get some good blood splatters on your models, demonstrated on this piece of paper. Grab a brush that can hold a medium amount of paint that is also not a very important or fine brush to you. Crank your airbrush up to about 20 psi, load up your brush, but don't overload it, and blow the blood on the model at different angles to the surfaces. You want acute angles for long splatters, right angles for dots. Alternatively, you can do this with just your brush by flicking that same kind of brush with a toothbrick, toothpick or paper clip. When that's done, try it with the inks as you used before to get some variation. Lastly, you can add some texture and color variation on the blood or elsewhere with the 
dried, crusty enamel you can find on the side of your pot of dark brown wash for green vehicles or streaking crap. It's up to you. Okay, we're coming around the corner on this project now. With that white on the eye we based out earlier, we'll simply apply some green fluorescent paint. Basically a glaze. I've heard some good stuff about Scale 75 or some other brands, but I've got a big old bottle of Chrome Air, so that's what I'll go with. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my version of Old One Eye, but if you're feeling adventurous, you can try painting some ESL, which stands for Environmental Source Light. This helps to portray a sort of off-camera glow and really adds to the mood and vignette feel of the model, which is what we're always going for in the grimdark style. If you want an expert's advice on it, check out Gravehammer Miniatures on YouTube. He's a really great, talented artist, so give him a like and subs subscribe if you can. This is my first time trying it out, so I totally borked it, but with a little practice you can figure it out. Just use the theory and skills you've gathered through your experience painting, and you should have a rough idea of what to do. First, I laid a layer of slightly thin uh, white ink down with my hairbrush. Then, I glazed over that with yellowy orange ink. After that, I brushed in some highlights which lie on the sharpest angles pointing toward our imagined light source. Then, I glazed a little fluorescent yellow paint over that. And voila! Okay, so that's the Scourge of Kalth all done up. I made this base a dark wintry one so I could get a lot of blood to show up and also to contrast the white with the darkness of the model itself, which you should always think about when designing your mini clip of a scene that is a grimdark miniature. That's all for now. I hope you liked this tutorial and found it educational. Just for your information, this model is up for auction on eBay currently, along with several of the models I've painted over the last six months or so for these tutorials. If you want a little piece of art, and you'd like to support a great charity, think about putting up a bid. This model could be yours. Stay tuned for more in the coming weeks. In the meantime, check out my link tree in the video description to follow me on social media accounts, drop me a like, add a comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. Until next time, have a safe journey and make sure to bring a light.